Hello students and welcome back. Now we are going to talk about a flip-flop design and we are going to discuss the SR flip-flop design. So in this video we are going to talk about edge triggered circuits which are called flip-flops. We are going to discuss the operation of SR flip-flop and how to implement it in Verilog. So now let us get started. So edge triggered circuit as we had discussed earlier, these circuits have a triggering signal applied on the rising or the falling edge of the clock. The level value will not affect the output. That means whenever we are rising or falling only at that point the computation will be done and that is why this type of circuit is going to give us a synchronous output. Synchronous means everything will be synchronized with respect to the rising or falling edge. So here we have the square wave and either we are going to synchronize with the negative edge that means when we are going from 1 to 0 or we are going to synchronize with the positive edge when we are going from 0 to 1. So SR flip-flop again is going to hold only one bit of data just like SR latch. A flip-flop will flip the value if the triggering is given by the edge of the clock. Again we have absolutely same functionality. Set means setting the output value to 1 and resetting means allocating a value of 0 to the output Q. In the hold condition we are going to retain the value. Now let us have a look at the truth table. This truth table is exactly same as we had discussed for SR latch. The only difference is we are showing one more extra input variable as Q that means the present output. So when S and R is 0, 0, you can see that if Q is 0, then Q of T plus 1, that means the next output is also 0. And if Q is 1, then Q of T plus 1 is also 1, that means we are holding. When S is 0 and R is 1, irrespective of the value of Q, the Q of T plus 1 is 0. When S is 1 and R is 0, then it is 1 and 1 1 case in invalid in all the conditions. Now let us look at the circuit diagram for SR flip flop. Here we have two NOR gates which are connected to Q and Q bar which is very similar to what we had discussed earlier. What is extra? We have a clock signal. So because the flip-flop needs the enabling with the clock, the triggering should be done with a clock. So I have extra signal clock. Now what we do, we attach NAND gates so that the signal is passed only at the rising edge of the clock. So this will enable S and R to go to the NOR gates only when the rising edge appears. Now we are going to implement this in Verilog using Vivado. Let us create the SR flip-flop now. So we are going to create a source SRFF and here we are going to mention the ports. The inputs are S, R and clock. Then there are going to be two outputs. One is Q and the next one will be Q bar. So we add some new ports and Q bar. These two are the outputs. And now we are going to code it using if else conditions. Now let us code it. So first of all what we are going to say always at the rate positive edge of clock. Fine that means 
everything what we write now between this begin and end will happen at the positive edge of the clock so here we will mention this inside a bracket now we say if s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 0 this is one zero case begin in this case what should be the value of q q should be given as 1 and q bar should be allocated as 0 and we end this if then we say else if the second case I am just copying this else if s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 in that case q will be 0 and q bar will be 1 then we say one more else if if both of them are 0 0 in that case what should be done then we say q is equal to q and q bar is equal to q bar we don't define anything for 1 1 and that is all we save our code now when we save it it is showing some warnings here but no errors here well let us check if these warnings are fatal or not because it is indicating that you cannot do this there should be an error so how do we check it we try to generate the schematic and as soon as we try to do that we get this list of errors which is basically saying that you are allocating q which is a known register remember when we were discussing the coding principle we had said whenever you want to store something please take registers and here we are taking q and q bar this is the major problem q and q bar are being allocated to q and q bar so we need to define them as register so a good way is in the module declaration you write only the names that means s r clock q and q bar and then you define separately that s r and clock these are my inputs and you can take them as wires and then you define the outputs separately we say output which is of the type register q comma q bar now we save it and we can observe those red lines are also not there now we generate the schematic for the same the schematic is generated without any issues now we are going to generate the simulation waveforms so go to simulation and run the simulations the simulation environment is ready so first of all i am going to define clock as a clock from 0 to 1 with 100 nanosecond then s is also a clock but again we are going to take the same approach it should not be a multiple of 100 so i take something like this you can even change the duty cycle if you want i can take the duty cycle to be 70 percent and then for r also take a clock which is not a multiple of 100 so i take something like 240 and the duty cycle also i change it and now we run it for 800 plus 800 nanoseconds and let us expand to see that what are the outputs that we are getting so one thing that is very crucial to observe here that this is our q and q bar they are changing at four places one two three four 
all the four changes are happening at the rising edge of the clock one is here one is here one is here and one is here all the changes are happening at the rising edge in between even if we are having certain changes in s and r see at this place s is changing here r is changing it will not change the output so in the flip flop only at the rising edge we will see what are the values this is 1 this is 0 so it is set to 1 at this rising edge this is 0 this is 1 so reset at this rising edge we have 0 1 so keep 0 at this rising edge it is 0 0 so hold it that is how the flip flop works so students now we have discussed SR latch and flip flops in the next video we are going to talk about D and T flip flop design keep learning thank you